Thank you, everybody, for being here this morning on a windy and wet day um, all over the island. So, man, unity in the Trinity is what we're going to talk about today. And, uh, man, the first thing that I was thinking is I am definitely not qualified by my perfection to speak with you guys this morning about the truth of Jesus Christ. Um, but I am qualified because I believe in the truth of Jesus Christ. There's a, a bunch of capable and excellent speakers in this room today. I can see a bunch of them, like more than a handful. And, man, I just thank God for the opportunity to allow me to share the truth of who God and who Jesus Christ is with you guys this morning. So thank you for being here. I appreciate that a whole lot. Um, just like Pastor Davey said, Pastor Lance, um, he just says hello. He says, that he loves you and misses you guys. Pastor Caron, um, the same. They're going to be coming back tonight at about 5 p.m., so they'll definitely be here next weekend for First Sunday. And I was telling Pastor on the phone last night, I'm like, bro, you work hard every day. You work hard every week to prepare for service. He's like, what are you talking about? I said, man, you got to prepare music. You rehearse with the team. You got to prepare your word. You got to make sure things are ready for setup and breakdown and all of the above. And on top of that, he counsels. And on top of that, he has a full-time job. And on top of that, he has a family and a wife and all of the above. I'm like, Pastor, they're like, man, kudos to you, man. Like, thank you for serving God the way that you do. Because he does it with a smile. He does it with a happy heart. He does it with a joyful heart. And he just loves serving God. And he understands so much that what Jesus has done for him, that that's what he pours back out onto all of us. So thank you, God, for blessing us with a pastor, with a group of pastors who love you so much, Lord, that they just give to us and give to us and give to us in response to how much you love them, Lord God. So, yeah, give them a round of applause man they they deserve it man they're never going to ask for it but yeah we give them love we give them mad love um let's jump right into the word ephesians 4 uh, 1 through 6 says therefore i a prisoner for serving the lord beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling for you have been called by god always be humble and gentle be patient with each other make an allowance for each other's faults because of your love um, <clears throat> make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you've been called to one glorious hope for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father who is over all and in all and living through all. And that's Ephesians 4, 1 through 6. Um, I will tell you this right now, man. Like God's plan is perfect. And only God is the truth. There's a lot of facts in life. Like the fact is I had a headache this morning. The fact is my feet were sore yesterday. I had a small kind of timber incident over here because my feet were sore yesterday after rehearsal. But the only truth is, is that God is alive and that God created heaven and earth and God did send his son down to die for us and that God did send the Holy Spirit to be our comforter. That is the truth. And so we either believe in the Bible, what the Bible says, or we don't. And either we believe in all of the Bible or we believe in none of the Bible. We cannot pick the pieces of the Bible out that, that matter to us or that are convenient for us to choose. We have to either believe and trust that the entire Bible from cover to cover is the truth or it's not. Now, in this house, the Bible is the truth from cover to cover. Because I remember my boss a few weeks ago, she asked me, she said, do you really believe that the flood really happened and Noah really did build the ark? And there really was two by two coming in. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. She was like, really? You really believe that? I'm like, yes, I do. And then she said, well, prove it. I said, prove you did it. <laughs> prove it didn't happen. She's like, well, I think it's more important for you to prove that it did happen. And I said, man, you know what? I really understand that you really don't want the facts about the ark and the flood. You're just wanting to question the whole thing. And so that's what it comes down to, right? Like, we got to understand why they're asking these questions. Because in their mind, intuitively, because God created us, we know there's a God. But man, how much do we try to push him away from what we're trying to do every single day? Maybe some of it, we're all about them. But then in some things that we don't want to give up, man, God, not right now. Or maybe that's not really true. Maybe I can. Maybe I can do this. But really, I'm not supposed to. So, <clears throat> number one. We were formed by the Father. God's plan is perfect. His plan is perfect. His plan for us. His plan for our family. His plan for this church. We were formed by the Father. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. He also said, and yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all formed by your hand. 
God is molding us. He is shaping us. We are the clay. He is the potter. And if you can think about the clay, when it's being formed, it's probably super uncomfortable for the clay. Like if the clay had a mouth and if the clay had feelings, the clay would probably be upset. Twisting them, bending them, torquing them, moving them all over the place. That's exactly what God is doing with us, right? This is the truth. This is the truth that God has uniquely made us, uniquely made us to be exactly who he wants us to be. We all have a role to play. If this room was filled with 25 kaipos, I think that would be kind of unreal. We'd be in a pretty nuts room. I know we get two kaipos, but if this room was filled by 25 kaipos, this would be a crazy room. Because I don't think you guys want to deal with 25 of me. Or 25 of anybody else for that matter. You know what I mean? We all bring something to the table that is uniquely made by God to be purposed for whatever it is that he wants us to do with our life. And, and in this house. Okay, let's move on. God the Father. That's the next blank is God the Father. Number two, we are filled by the Spirit. We are filled by the Spirit. As Jesus came up out of the water, he saw the heavens splitting apart and the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. If you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. A Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit. Our comforter, our peace, our guide. How do we do what God has called us to do? How do we know how to make moves? The Bible doesn't necessarily specifically say, today you will not go there, you will go there instead. But the Bible does say that he gave us a Holy Spirit, he gave us a comforter and a guide to show us in which direction to go at what time. And if we yield to that voice, that voice is like a muscle to us. Or our ability to hear that voice is like a muscle that needs to be worked out and flexed. And if we don't work it out, if we don't flex it, that muscle is going to grow weak. That muscle is going to grow weary. And that muscle is going to grow limp. And we will not be able to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. Therefore, we will not be able to get his guidance. And therefore, we will be lost and confused when it's time to do what God has called us to do. Because that still, quiet voice will become nil to us. However, if we listen... And do according to, the muscle gets strong, and the muscle gets, gets flexed, and it gets stronger, and it gets bigger, and the voice gets louder, and it becomes more evident and more obvious what we're supposed to do in certain situations. Thank goodness that God sent down the Holy Spirit to guide us and to lead us through this life. Because I don't know about your life, but I know about mine, God has taken us through some very, very crazy things. And man, without his love and without his comforter and without the Holy Spirit to bring us out of things, we would be lost without him. We would be lost without the Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit. Number three, then we are sent forth by the Son. I have begun, or I have been given, sorry, all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this, that I am with you always, even to the end of the ages. God the Son, he has commissioned us for a work. He has commissioned us for a work. We have things that we need to do on this earth to fulfill what God has created us to do. And thank goodness that God sent down his son to be the example of what it is that we're to do on this earth. Yeah? He has commissioned us. Okay, now let's jump straight into the application. Because this is my favorite part right here. So we were talking about the unity of the Trinity, right? Or the unity in the Trinity. We were formed by the Father, God the Father. We were filled by the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit. And then we were sent forth by the Son, God the Son. In God's perfect plan, in God's perfect plan, he understood exactly what we needed to prepare us to move into action. Now, if we just talk about how good God is and talk about how amazing the Holy Spirit is, and we talk about Jesus Christ, but we take no action, then what is it for? Then what is it for? Is it just for our understanding? Is it just so we know? Is it just so we can be comforted and we can feel good? Or is it because God has really called us to do something as a church family? 
Is it because God is really wanting us as a church family to touch the community and touch the island and touch the state and touch the nation and touch the world by what we do as a church family? Now, it may seem to you that out of all the people who live in the state of Hawaii and we're such a small church that we do not have the ability to touch people's lives. That is a lie. God has called us to do something. He has formed us uniquely for a purpose. He has sent down his Holy Spirit to guide us. And he has sent his son for his son to give us the example of what true love really is and what being on a mission is all about. And for his son to commission us to move in his name, to move in the love of the Holy Spirit, the love of God, the love of the son. He has called us to move as a church. So now our call to you, church, is let's go. Now, the next couple times that I'm given the opportunity to speak, even if there's not a couple times, whatever, in passing, that's going to be my theme. My theme is going to be let's go. Because I believe like that's part of my role here at the church. It's to be the guy in the corner saying, let's go. Let's go. We may not have everything all figured out, but let's go. At least we know we're going. At least we know we're going. We may not have all the details figured out, but we knew we were going to move to Enchanted Lakes on November 5th. We didn't have all the banners made. We didn't have everything figured out on how we were going to load the trailers. Right, Joe? We didn't even know how many carts we had. We didn't know how many chairs we had, but we knew what we were moving. And we put that plan before God and said, God, we got to go. God, we want to go. And why do we want to go? We wanted to, for a few reasons, we wanted to go because we weren't able to do our own thing at, at Bayview Golf Course. Thank you, Bayview, for allowing us to be there while we were. But we have a heartbeat. This church family has a heartbeat. It has a life. We have a mission. And we were being held back from certain things. We only had five minutes to set up service. And then we got a sound check on fast. And then we got to hurry up and do this and hurry up and do that and hurry up and do that. So everything just crowded. Then we had to hurry up and get out of here because there was another church coming after us. We didn't like that. Man, God, there has to be something better. So we started looking. We thought we were going to go over there on the other side. That didn't happen. But God brought us back to Enchanted Lake. Well, when are we going to leave? Man, let's go November 5th. Oh, it's pretty close. Yeah, but it's not that far. I mean, it's not that far, but it's not too far away. So we were like, we want to come to Enchanted Lake before the holidays came. Because we want to make sure that we know how to set this place up and how to get everything ready before Christmas came. And man, thank goodness for giving us the wisdom. Thank God that he gave us the wisdom to leave Bayview when we did. Because right after we left, they announced that they were shutting the doors on Bayview. And so where everybody else was scrambling where they were going to go, they were trying to move their stuff. They were trying to get rid of their equipment. They were trying to get rid of their supplies. They didn't know where everything was going to go. We were already gone. We weren't a part of all that confusion. We weren't a part of all that mess. God had already pulled us out and sent us to our new home. Man, isn't that the wisdom of God? That is the wisdom of God. None of us can do this on our own. We have to do it with each other. Because if Eric only relied on me for all the info, we'd be standing somewhere in a ditch somewhere because I'm just like, let's go without all the wisdom necessarily. But then you got Eric and pastor and pastor, right? And everybody's saying, wait, wait a minute. Okay, okay, we want to go, but what else do we got to do to prepare ourselves to go? Oh, yeah, I never even think about that one. I'm just ready to go. You know what I mean? So we can't do all this by ourselves. It takes all of us who are uniquely designed by God for this purpose to move together in unity so we can truly, truly meet the mission that God has called us on. I'm not the mastermind on how to do all the setup and breakdown and all that kind of stuff. But watch, when you watch Joe and Kimo start bashing their heads together to make things right, they make things right. Now, is Joe the most friendly guy all the time? No, I'm just kidding, Joe. <laughs> just kidding, Joe. <laughs> can we be true in church all right so let's read this again therefore i a prisoner for serving the lord beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling for you have been called by god always be humble and gentle be patient with each other make an allowance for each other's faults because of your love make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit binding yourselves together with peace for there is one body and one spirit. Just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future, there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father who is over all and in all and living through all. So as we start this move together, church, we moved here already. We've done that move. But as we begin this move to really come together in unity, 
that all of our members of this church family start to take action and start to bear their cross or pick up their sword or pick up whatever your tool is, whether it be from cleaning the bathrooms to greeting somebody in the front, whether it be to making sure that there's coffee for everybody, whether it be to setting up the trailer, setting up children's, teaching children's, setting up chairs, breaking down curtains, emptying trash, whether it be teaching, whether it be playing bass, drums, guitar, whatever it is, we need everybody on deck. And as we start to come together in unity to serve God's purpose for this house, because we do have a mission, we do have a vision, and we do have core values, so we have things set up for us that tell us where we're headed. If we really come together as a church family to love God, love people, make disciples, find purpose, and share Jesus Christ, if that's why we do what we do, then every other difference doesn't even matter. It matters in that those differences make us unique and strong and tight, but it doesn't matter because whatever, whatever things that you have that may irritate me, that doesn't matter because we're moving towards the same mission. Whatever differences we have, it doesn't matter because we're moving for a purpose. We are going to be the wave of God's love, mercy, and grace impacting generations for Christ. We are going to do that. That is going to happen. And I would encourage you all to be a part of that mission. Be a part of that mission. Don't just show up every Sunday, get filled, and then leave. Now, whatever your mission is, like, please, don't, don't take that the wrong way. I'm not saying if you're not helping us set up chairs, then you don't belong here. That is not what I'm saying. All I'm saying is that whatever call God is calling you to do in this church family, we want to be a church family who takes action. We want to be a church family that's on the move. Be a part of that for us. Everybody has a unique gift and a, a unique skill set that can add to what God is doing here in this house. Come be a part of it. Come be a part of it. Core value number three, of course, is to strive to be one with the body of Christ. Unity between us is critical. Unity between us is absolutely critical. Unity in your home is absolutely critical. Shoot, unity within yourself is absolutely critical. Unity within myself is absolutely critical. I know within myself, I'm just saying, within myself, there were moments that we were preparing for worship, and I said, man, Kaipo, you can't do this anymore. You can't lead worship anymore, man. Just, this is years ago you did that, bro. You don't, still, you don't got what it takes to lead worship anymore. Brother, I need unity within myself because I can't stop. If God says lead worship, then Kaipo, you got to lead worship, bro. So never mind all those voices that are telling you that you cannot. Because we know the devil is going to try to find any way to take us off of our game. He's going to try any way possible, especially when you're a part of something that's on the move. Especially when you're up in the game. The devil is going to try something to pull you out of that game. And any door that you leave wide open or even leave creaked open, the devil is going to try to slither his way in there. Slither his way in there to take you off of your mark. To take you out the game. And he's going to try to pull you out the game to try to throw us off in what we're trying to do as a family. We need all hands on deck. See, but the great thing about that is, is that we have a God who is greater and stronger than anything the devil could ever do. Anything the devil could ever say, anything that he could bring towards us or bring at us, we have a God that is stronger than all of that. We have a Holy Spirit that can guide us and speak to us and lead us through any of those things. And we can plead the blood of Jesus Christ to cover us and to strengthen us in any of those times. We can do this, family. However, he has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. That is why the scriptures say, when he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love Growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow. 
so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. God is bringing us together, church. He's bringing us together, family, to do a work. And my message isn't long today. It's nice and short and simple. We have unity in the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He has uniquely sent these pieces with a perfect plan in mind that we needed to be formed. We needed to be filled and we need to be sent forth in the, in the commission that Jesus Christ has sent us on. And then in that, there needs to be unity within us, within ourselves, within our homes, and within our church family to serve the mission that God has called us to serve. Because I will tell you this, Pastor Lance, Pastor Caron, Pastor Davey, Pastor Judy, they don't bust tail every week and help out every week just because it makes them feel good every week. They believe that they have been ordained and commissioned by God for a work. And for all of us that come here to volunteer, we don't just do this because it makes us feel good. We have been commissioned and ordained to do a work. And I believe that all of us here have been commissioned and ordained to do a work. Now we have to get together with God, really understand who Jesus Christ, his son is, and really listen to the Holy Spirit to figure out where our place is in that. But let's do it together. You don't have to do it by yourself. We can do this together. We can do it with each other. We can move with each other. We can grow together. Core value number four is serving wholeheartedly in response to God's love. Serving wholeheartedly in response to God's love. And... Again, my message is simply this. God is plan. His plan is perfect. And God has a plan for us, church. So let's move together. Let's grow together. Let's serve in unity. Never mind all the extra stuff. Never mind all the differences. And let's just move in what God is calling us to do as a church family. Now, we got Christmas season coming up. Christmas is coming up, and it's an op awesome opportunity to share Christ with others. The theme for our Christmas, our Christmas message this year is take me to the king. Take me to the king. Take me to the king because I'm weak. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring, but take me to the king. My heart is torn in pieces. It's my offering. Take me to the king. I encourage all of you to tell your friends, tell your family, tell anybody that you come into contact with, your coworkers, whoever it is that you come into contact with, be here. Come be a part of what we're doing at the Wave Christian Fellowship because there's some action going on, and we believe that God is calling us to do something. Let's do it together. Amen. Sound like a plan? Amen. All right, let's pray. Lord God, we just say thank you, Lord God. Thank you for who you are, and thank you for giving us a mission and a purpose. And even before that, Lord God, thank you for being God the Father. Thank you for, for forming us, Lord God, uniquely. Thank you for letting us know, Lord God, that you have created us uniquely to serve in a way that is going to be pleasing, holy, and acceptable to you, Lord God. We want to do your will, Lord God. We want to love like you loved us, Lord God. We want to walk like how you showed us to walk, Lord God. We want to move in your peace, Lord God. We want to move in your grace, Lord God. Move in your love. Move in your mercy, Lord God. We want to bring unity to our homes, Lord God. And whatever that means for us, Lord God, we want to bring unity to our homes. If we have to pray more together, we have to spend more time together, or for us personally, we even have to start personally getting our life back on track and living for you. Lord God, help us to not be too prideful to jump back into knowing that you are the one that has called us. You are the one that has created us. You are the one that has filled us, Lord God. And you are the one that had the wisdom and the perfect plan to send your son down to die for our sins. That no matter what it is, that his, sin, his blood is strong enough to cover us from all these sins and all these things. Lord God, we want to give our lives to you in a different way. We want to give our lives to you in a deeper way, Lord God, in a more meaningful way, Lord God. You have called us to a purpose. You have called us to a plan. You have called us to a mission. Help us to fulfill and live that out, Lord God. Help us to reset our thinking, Lord God. Help us to reset our thinking into knowing that it is all about you. And that in our work, in our effort, it's all about you, Lord God. We do this for you. We do this with you, through you, and to honor and to give you glory. That is why we do what we do, Lord God. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord God. Thank you for this opportunity. And with your head still bowed,
with your head still bowed because it only is between you and God. Lord God, you have called us to this place to give us an opportunity, Lord God, to reconnect with you, Lord God. And if there is any of us, including myself, if there is any of us who wants to reconnect with God at a different way, or if you have never, ever under understood what it means to have relationship with Jesus Christ, this is an opportunity for all of us to be in agreement together, to do this together, to make this declaration together. Let us agree with you that this is the moment for you to reconnect with God and that God wants to love on you so much, but he just needs you to open up your heart and your mind to let him in. And if you believe that today is that day for you to open up your heart and open up your mind to reconnect with God or to connect with God for the first time and to understand what having a relationship with Jesus Christ is, please just lift up your head and then just look at me and I will agree with you that God wants to reconnect with you. I agree with you. I absolutely agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you, and I agree with you, and I agree with you, and I agree with you. Lord God, your people, Lord God, your children desire to have a relationship with you, Lord God. They desire to know you more. They desire to reconnect with you, Lord God, and grow in who you are, to grow in grace in your word, Lord God. Your people desire that. And they have made a public declaration of that desire, Lord God. And as a church family, we agree with them that your Holy Spirit will insert and go into their heart, Lord God. And that the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, will cover them. Will cover them and move them and compel them to come closer to you, Lord God. Give them the desire to reach out to us, Lord God, and help them to know that they don't have to do this on their own, that we're supposed to do this together. We're supposed to move through this together and do this together and grow together. Thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity. And thank you for saving them. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for saving the people who are lost, Lord God. But now we are found in you. In your truth, Lord God, we thank you. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen.